Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing another challenge video where if we lose three games in a row, and this includes overtime this time around, all right, I gotta trade someone in the top six of our roster or our top four for defense. I guess I could add starting goalie as well, but I think it's just gotta be either top six, top four, or our starting goalie. That way it's at least gonna be a pretty decent size trade so we're not going to be moving someone who's on the fourth line for example and just making a minuscule move no it's got to be at least somewhat important we're going to be using the montreal canadians today and i'm going to set just you know a rule in place more of a rule of thumb not an actual set in stone rule although i do plan to follow it i will only be allowed to trade one first overall draft pick and i don't want to go too crazy with draft picks in general. So here's what the team looks like going into the season. I forgot they got Kirby Doc. That is interesting to say the least. So obviously this would be our top six. I got to trade someone here if we lose three games in a row. Defense, this is our top four. Could try trading away Chris Weidman at 79 overall, but I'll try to avoid that just because again, it wouldn't really be a big time move. Carey Price, 90 overall. I don't, what, what's going on with him? Is he still playing? Is he all right? You know what though? I think I'm going to do this. I might move Josh Anderson down to the third line and have Gole Caulfield on the second line because I feel like he's going to have more trade value. So if we do have to make a trade, he should be a potential asset that will be heading out. So here we go. We have three games here and I suppose I could sim three games at a time because it doesn't really matter. We need to wait for three games anyway and now we just reset it with that Rangers W. So we got three more games here with the San Jose Sharks, the Carolina Hurricanes and the Detroit Red Wings. And we are going to lose two in a row. If we lose to Seattle, then we got to make a move. And it looks like they're doing pretty good. All right, that's three games in a row. And I'm going to call that a reset. So if we lose against the Sharks, that'll be one again. I just want to point out too, that because I have to trade someone from the top six, doesn't mean I only have to trade someone from the top six. It just has to be someone in that category. And I can include other players if I want to as well. So really I could trade, you know, a top four defenseman and a top six forward if I wanted to. It just has to have at least one, but I'm going to try to get Trevor here. It's pretty close in value. I feel like the third actually might be too much, but they don't want to give him up. So it's going to be tougher. Let's see if a fourth will go through and it is just a bit low. So what if I add a fourth and actually, you know what? Nah, let's just go right for the third. That should do the trick. And it does. So now we got Trevor here on the second line center. He'll be playing with Anderson and Drew N. I don't know if that's going to make any difference. Oh my word. What happened here? All right, slight adjustment. We're all good. We are all good. So we have the full reset now. Let's sim three games in a row here and see what happens. We actually get a W against... Oh, wow. That was pretty successful. But now, because of that loss against the Ducks, if we lose here... Oh, oh, we won. We got a big W out of the Islanders. That is huge. With a full reset, we go to the Golden Knights. Another win there. Two in a row. All right. Seven, six, and two. We're not doing too bad. Sim the next three games. Detroit, Boston, and the Rangers... And that will do it. That's three L's in a row. I'm going to try to ship off Kirby Doc in exchange for Mangiapane and a fourth. This might go through and we'll find out momentarily. Yes, we... Oh, wow. They are just saying that we got fleeced, but I don't care. Our updated first line is Andrew with Nick and Brendan. It feels so weird calling them by their first name, but it's also kind of funny at the same time. So I'm going to continue to do it. Big win there against Nashville and a really big win there against the Capitals. Two overtime losses. So we take those points and that's three wins in a row. We're on a bit of a roll here. Let's go. Three more games. Chicago, St. Louis. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, there it is. I'm just not realizing I broke my own rule and traded Kirby Doc because he was not in the top six. Oh, man. Wow. Didn't take very long, did it? At least I caught it this time. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that, but I will try to justify it in saying that at least he had some decent trade value. You know, it was a still still big trade nonetheless. Palatin a third for Gallagher, perhaps? Proposed trade? Okay, too far off. What if I make this a four? Still going to be the same deal? Proposed trade. Oh, they accepted it. Wow, didn't see that coming. The value wasn't that much different. I'm swapping these two solely for the purpose that we get a plus two on this second line. Starting out in Philly here, and this will be a three to two L. Don't we? Oh, I was going to say, don't do it again. But two big back-to-back -back wins there for the Montreal Canadiens. Okay, Palat, I see you. Two more dubs and a shootout loss to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Oh boy, we're on a two-game losing streak here. Toronto could make us have to trade another player, and they do. 
brutal. I'm trying to avoid trading Suzuki at all costs because he's our leading point guy at the moment. So yeah, that's not really a player I want to move particularly. Matheson for Ferraro, we're losing one overall, but it'd be a good cap break for us for future trades. So let's see if it'll go through one for one. Trade rejected just a bit low. So we could probably add in a sixth or a seventh to make this one a good deal. Will the seventh do the trick? No, it won't. We'll move up to a six then. This should get it done. Propose trade. There it is. Mario is actually going to be in our top two. Love to see it. How close are we getting to the deadline? Oh, we're getting there. It's, yeah, not too far away. No, no, really, really. The Flyers are always a go-to for this because they have players on the block that are good. So we're losing one overall here. Uh, actually, no, we're gaining one overall and getting a few abilities on top of it. I don't think this will go through one for one, though. Tried adding a fifth. That might do it. It does. Okay. I thought I was going to have to go a little bit higher. I'm going to be honest. And we have two plus ones now. 6-1 win over Chicago. Another one against New Jersey. But we have an L at the end there to the Coyotes. Will we lose to Dallas and the Golden Knights and make another move? Yes, we will. They want Heinemann. They don't want Savard. But if we can get Ellis back, and Thompson might even fit into the lineup in the bottom six. I doubt it, but it's possible anyway. Propose the trade and not interested. Okay, so we're gonna have to spice it up a little bit. What if I send you Norlander instead? Propose trade. Still no. A second round draft pick maybe? Still no. I removed Thompson. The only reason I had him there was because there was gonna be too many skaters in the organization, but will the second go through without him? Still probably not. Oh, so they said it's quite close in value, but I think they're still not interested. I could try adding a seventh anyway, but I feel like they'll still say no. Savard and Pitlick for Chernak? Proposed trade? Isn't sufficient at all. Oh, wow. All right, I wasn't expecting that. What about Savard and a fourth for Chernak? Send that. There we go. The trades always start off okay, and then I just start to get lazy with it and try to force stuff through. Back-to-back -back overtime wins after an L to the Colorado Avalanche, so we're safe for at least another three games here, which means we won't have to make a move until there if we do go on to lose the next three games, which we did not do. We actually won all three of them, as a matter of fact. And once again, I missed this game somehow, but it doesn't really matter. A Canadian road trip. We got the Senators, the Jets, and the Calgary Flames. Don't do it. Oh, we did it. Will this go through as is? It's kind of close. Proposed trade. Oh, they are going to take it. Okay, let's do it. But the joke's on me because I didn't trade someone from the top six, top four, or a starting goalie. So hold on. I could trade away Zegris, get back a second, which we could use for trading, and Chandler Stevenson. Stephenson. I can't remember which one it is, even though he did play for the Capitals. But let's try it. Proposed trade. It is done. So Suzuki's now up on the first line at 86 overall, and we got Chandler on line two. He'll be playing with Palat and Dadanov. It is possible that we can get to the deadline here without losing three games in a row. So let's see if the Montreal Canadiens can manage to make that happen, or if we're just going to lose. Yeah, it's going to happen, isn't it? It really is. Calgary's first round has more value, and I think I'm going to use up that first round pick that I get to trade here with Palat in exchange for Timo. I don't know if this will go through or not. It will not. So never mind. I might not get Timo after all. Honestly, I still don't think this is going to go through, but I am trying it for Barzal. Boom. No. I'm going to go on a limb and say that this is going to be our last trade because I think that if we get him, we'll do all right. So I'm adding a second in as well. Still rejected. What if I add a higher valued second like this one? Will that go through? Come on. Really? I don't even really want to do this, but I'm going to try it anyway, even though he's not on the block. Proposed trade. And it's rejected. Of course it is. I'll toss in Anaheim's third. Still no. I basically gave up on trying to make a big trade. Oh, Druen, he's not in the top six. Oh, no. Suzuki and a first for Barzal. I honestly still think this will not go through. He's 89 overall. He's got an X factor. Proposed the trade. And they just say I'm an idiot. Fair enough. All right, here's the updated team. Barzal will be first line center. If we go to defense, uh-uh. I refuse. Hmm. Of course. Well... Congrats. Weidman, you're promoted. Justin Hall, you're demoted. We have four more games before the trade deadline. If we win this game against Arizona, it means we will not have to make another trade. So can we do that? Philadelphia Flyers is a W, and there we go. We are officially done making maneuvers. Oh, wow. We lost those two as well. So we would have had to have made a deadline move if we lost to the Arizona Coyotes, but we did not, thankfully. So here are the players on the block, not making any moves. I'm just running. Actually, I'm kind of curious. Let's see if we can find a trade for Ellis. No. What about Truba? Nope. Okay, get me out of here. Not really looking like we're going to be in the playoffs, although we did win three games straight after the trade deadline, which is pretty solid. Our record is still looking subpar, however. Yeah, we are not making playoffs. It is completely ruled out. We are last in the division. It was a good run. 
It wasn't really a good run, but we tried. So there we are, last in the Atlantic Division with 78 points. That is disappointing to say the least, but you know, it's going to happen from time to time. Tampa Bay won the President's Trophy with 10 more points than the second placed Colorado Avalanche. It was almost the top 16 teams, but Florida got finessed. Our most points came from Cam Atkinson with 55. We got 52 from Chandler, 49 from Mangiapane. Palat put up 48. Barzal only put up 42 and was a dash 29. What on earth is that all about? How many points did he get for us? 15 and 22. That is horrendous. Price had a 908 to 90. 30 wins on the year. Allen had a 913 actually, but still a losing record. Vasilevsky put up 52 wins. Kemper was the next closest with 41. That's actually outrageous. A 928 save percentage while he was at it and a 207 GAA. Hughes led defenseman with point a game, 82. We got Jones with 74. McCarr with 67. Doughty and Fox with 63. It looks like the Rocket Richard is gonna go to Ovi with 57 goals, but the Art Ross will go to Connor McDavid with 104. Ooh, it's Toronto and Edmonton in the Stanley Cup Finals. A Canada versus Canada Stanley Cup, and Toronto will emerge victorious for the first time since 67. There you have it. President's Trophy went to Tampa Bay, and as we saw, Edmonton was in the finals against Toronto. Connor McDavid gets the Art Ross, and the heart goes to Kucherov. Again, pretty rare that these two don't go to the same player. Hughes with the Norris, and the Lady Bing will also go to Kucherov. Bunting gets the Calder. Matthews with the Con Smythe, the Vesna, and the Jennings probably. Yeah, it goes to Vazzy. Yoki Haru gets the Bill Masterton. Denny. Or Dennis, one of the two, gets the Jack Adams. O'Reilly gets the Selkie. Cooch with the Ted Lindsay. Oh! How many goals did he have? Wow, I completely overlooked that. But he had 61 goals. Not bad. Here's the playoff tree. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. There was a fair amount of trades in there. That was a decent rule, I suppose, in terms of number of trades. So I hope you guys had a good time during that one. If you have other ideas, go ahead, let me know. And I will see you soon.